multiplication of sinusoids occurs frequently in signal and information processing. So in this video, we're going to look at how to multiply two sinusoids using the Euler representation for each sinusoid as a sum of complex sinusoids. And then we'll interpret this product of two sinusoids in the time domain and the frequency domain in terms of the spectrum. We're going to begin with an example where we have a sinusoid V of t, and for convenience we've chosen the frequency to be 1 hertz. And then we're going to multiply V of t times another sinusoid, and here I've chosen the frequency of that to be 100 hertz. The product we're going to call x of t. So I've drawn a graph of V of t, and the amplitude goes from plus to minus 1, and it repeats every second. Now when I draw the product of V of t times cosine 2 pi 100 t, because the cosine with frequency 100 hertz oscillates so much faster than V of t, this behavior where the fast oscillations in orange are associated with 100 hertz, and then the amplitude of those oscillations ends up being modified or modulated, we'll say, by the cosine of 2 pi t sinusoid, the 1 hertz sinusoid. So I have this 100 hertz sinusoid that's oscillating pretty fast, and then I have a 1 hertz amplitude variation. And we can take this product using the Euler expansion. So I've rewritten the cosine of 2 pi t as e to the j 2 pi t plus e to the minus j 2 pi t over 2. And then I'm going to write cosine of 2 pi times 100 t as e to the j 2 pi 100 t plus e to the minus j 2 pi 100 t divided by 2. We'll multiply each of the terms by using the FOIL acronym. So first we'll take the first terms, and since the product of exponents ends up summing the powers of those exponents, I'm going to have the sum of 2 pi t and 2 pi 100 t. I end up with the first term giving me e to the j 2 pi 101 t. Then we'll take the outer terms e to the j 2 pi t times e to the minus j 2 pi 100 t, and adding the exponents, we end up with e to the minus j 2 pi 99 times t. Taking the inner terms, I have 100 minus 1 when I add the exponents, so I get e to the j 2 pi 99 t, and then finally the last term is to take e to the j minus 2 pi t times e to the minus j 2 pi 100 t, Adding the exponents again, we get e to the minus j 2 pi 101 t. Now I'm going to group these terms in a convenient way. I'm going to group the terms with frequency 101 hertz. And so I have e to the j 2 pi 101 t, e to the minus j 2 pi 101 t over 2. And I'll group another term involving the frequencies positive 99 hertz and negative 99 hertz. We'll take the 1 fourth, distribute the 2's, so I can rewrite this as... 1 half cosine of 2 pi 101 t plus 1 half cosine 2 pi 99 t. So when I multiply two sinusoids, I had a 1 hertz and a 100 hertz sinusoid. I end up with a sinusoid at 101 hertz, the sum of the two frequencies, plus another sinusoid at 99 hertz, which is the difference of the two frequencies. So we have two equivalent ways of thinking about this product of sinusoids in the time domain. One way is to think about our sinusoid V of t as modulating or varying the amplitude of the sinusoid that was at frequency 100 hertz. And that's illustrated by this graph that we drew of the sinusoid. You see the amplitude is changing with time. The other way to think about this product, which we just discovered through this derivation involving Euler's formula, is to think about x of t being a sum of sinusoids, one at the sum frequency and another at the difference frequency of the individual products. So both of these are valid and equivalent ways to think about this multiplication of sinusoids. Now, one may be more useful in one particular problem than another problem, but they're equivalent. Now, let's look at what this multiplication has done in terms of the spectrum, or as a function of frequency. Recall that our product of the 1 hertz sinusoid and the 100 hertz sinusoid gave us two terms, one at 101 hertz and one at 99 hertz. So let's look at the spectra of these different cases. 
First of all, the spectra of V of t is going to have components at 1 hertz, and the strength of those components is going to be 1 half. And when I look at X of t, I've got two sinusoids. One is at 101 hertz, and that one is in the purple color. And so I've drawn the spectrum for the sinusoid at 101 hertz, plus 101 and minus 101 hertz on the frequency axis. And then I've got in blue the sinusoid with 99 hertz. And so those are these two components, one at 99 and one at minus 99. So we can think about X of F as having taken V of F and shifting it. We've shifted V of F to the right by 100 hertz. That gives us these two terms. We can write this as V of F minus 100. That's this graph shifted to the right by 100 hertz. And then I also have something at negative frequencies. I can express that as V of F plus 100 because that's V of F shifted to the left by 100 hertz. Again, the separation here was 2 hertz, separation here is 2 hertz. The math works out to write X of F as 1 half V of F plus 100 plus one half V of F minus 100. So when we think about the spectra, we can interpret this as taking the spectrum of V and shifting it to the right by 100 hertz or to the left by 100 hertz. This is a very powerful idea that we'll exploit in a subsequent video when we talk about amplitude modulation in communications. So let's wrap this up. I'm going to assume in general that I have x of t be the product of two cosines, one at frequency f1, the other at frequency f2, and for convenience I'm going to assume that f2 is bigger than f1. I can think about this two ways in the time domain. One is taking the sinusoid that has the higher frequency and letting its amplitude vary sinusoidally at the frequency corresponding to f1, the lower frequency sinusoid. The other way to think about it is that x of t is equivalent to having two sinusoids, one at the sum of the frequencies and the other at the difference. Now in the frequency domain, I can think about this as taking the spectrum of my sinusoid with frequency f1, shifting it so that it's centered at f2 and minus f2. So I'm shifting this spectrum to the right by f2 hertz and to the left by f2 hertz.